This is uh, known as the Bright Trial. Um, I was uh, pleased to be able to chair this trial. It's a large international trial comparing benamustine and rituximab to what to standard chemotherapy, either RCVP or RCHOP. And this is for patients who had low-grade lymphoma or mantle cell lymphoma. A little bit of way of background, benamustine and rituximab is a very popular regimen for patients with um, low-grade um, lymphoma and, and mantle cell lymphoma. There was a um, trial con that was conducted by um, the STILL group, their uh, NHL1. This trial has um, been previously presented and, and showed that there was a, um, an improvement in response rate and there was an improvement in now in progression-free free survival. Um, this trial was um, conducted at the, um, as a, a confirmatory trial and, and trial with a little bit, the design is a little bit different in the sense that it was designed to, for the, to get FDA approval of this, of benamustine and rituximab um, as frontline therapy. And so it was, um, it's an important difference between the two trials because one was more of a, an investigator initiated sort of cooperative group trial and this was, it was, you know, with all the standard, um, the standards that you would accept with most um, industry-sponsored trials necessary to, to, for the Food and Drug Administration. The interesting findings from this trial was that, um, and, and I should say the trial was designed for non-inferiority. So it was based on the complete remission rate and the non-inferiority in the valuable um, patient population. It should, clearly showed that. So, and, base, and, the, and the, it hit the, the primary endpoint. And when we looked at subgroups, the trend was the same in just essentially every subgroup that we could uh, could look at. Whether you looked at the RCHOP or the RCBP, whether you looked at the mantle cell or on the follicular um, BR was clearly non-inferior. In some populations, it was it was superior. The the thing that um, I think interests many many folks is that the uh, the um, the combination of bendamustine and rituximab was highly active in, in mantle cell lymphoma and, and um, had a hazard ratio of about 1.5 when you look at RCHOP, uh, much higher when you looked at RCVP, and RCVP is probably, probably really not an inferior treatment regimen for patients with mantle cell. I guess the other thing that's interesting in, um, about this is the side effect profile. So, you know, we associate alopecia with RCHOP with any anthracycline. We associate um, mucositis and febrile neutropenia. Um, we associate um, neuropathies with any, of the, with any of the vincoses used. And that's very much true. This trial showed that. So there was a higher incidence of febrile neutropenia with patients receiving RCHOP than those patients receiving BR. There was a much higher incidence of of neuropathy um, across the uh, in, in both RCHOP and RCVP compared to to bendamustine and rituximab. The thing that I thought was interesting was that I had expected bendamustine rituximab not to have as much nausea and vomiting, and in fact, it, it had um, as much or greater um, um, when you look at all the adverse events. It had more um, nausea and vomiting to, despite the despite. Uh, uh, the use of uh, antiemetics, and and that's another question I get is like so so because I think other people have the same the same thing. How could that how could that be? We looked at all the antiemetics used, and there was nothing dictated in the in the trial. It was left up to the the individual uh, investigator. But when we dialed down on um, the use of 5-HT3 antagonists, it was equivalent. We looked at the cycle. We looked at that, that uh, it was given in, we, it, it all seems exactly the same across. So I can't explain it, uh, the difference um, based on, on, the, on the prophylaxis or treatment of, of nausea. So I think that was an interesting finding as well.